national management. You guys are aware of those details. We're focused today on, in some sense, it's Chinese management. A lot of people say it's Chinese management. A lot of people call it Guangxi. But many, many people don't understand Guangxi. A lot of people have wrong interpretations of Guangxi. A lot of people, as we saw, can understand parts of it, but not all of it. So, a big part of it that you cannot get away from with Guangxi, a big part of Chinese management that you cannot get away from now is social media, and a big part of Guangxi or, or Chinese management or management anywhere in the world that you can't get away from now is big data. Um, so what my question was, what do you need to be successful with your great idea? You need marketing? Maybe. You need uh, money? Uh, money alone will not help. A lot of the time nowadays, with marketing, you don't really need very much money at all, right? So before we talk about what, we was, what somebody just said, how is it that in the past, companies with great ideas needed to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on marketing, but now you don't? What do you mean marketing is free? Why would anybody pay $100,000? Give me an example of a, a person or an organization or any way somebody could pay $100,000 in the past that they might not want to do today. You have a lot of money, that's what they did have in the past, and they used money to do marketing. <coughs> but sometimes doing that same thing today will not help. It will not ensure your success. So, so yeah, you can definitely sell your idea. You can be successful by getting money by selling your idea. Sure, that's one thing you do it, but you can't do that easily just all by yourself. If you really want to be successful, yes, you need Guangxi. <laughs> what is that? Uh, building a relationship. Paying it forward. Paying it forward? My, de my definitions, yes. <laughs> so, yes, now we're getting into what we're talking about here. Thank you. Um, the assignment that I gave you for review to discuss was talking about what is social capital, why should you care about it, and yes, I defined it as Guangxi, and it can also be defined as networking, as passing favors, or paying it forward. I like the last definition the best, paying it forward. Uh, to answer the earlier question, there are a lot of companies that spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on newspaper advertising in the past, or magazine advertising in the past. Well, when was the last time any of you bought a newspaper? <laughs> exactly. So if a company spends all that money to try to promote products, it might not be very effective. Same with TVs. <laughs> In the past, you were lucky to be able to get a, a black and white TV. And then you were very lucky if you had a color TV. And people used to watch that. The whole family, as a special occasion, would come home, sit down in front of this idiot box, otherwise known as a TV, and watch things as a good family time, including all of the commercials. Well, that doesn't happen. It happens less and less. This morning, 8 o'clock this morning, there was an internet guy putting in the internet TV in my house. So people don't use the regular TV anymore. I can download anything I want and watch it anytime I want. That's happening more and more, especially with the younger people. So spending money for a traditional TV ad is being reduced a lot. So how can you use Guangxi? Does it take money for a company to develop itself with marketing now? How can you develop a company, let's say your flying car, without $100,000 for marketing? What is generally the best way to do it now? What do you think? With Guangxi, with your social capital, although you know that Obama won because he was a better blogger than Hillary Clinton, right? He won because his Facebook and Twitter activity was much better than Hillary Clinton. Period. Right. So how do you find those? That's what this picture is. Some people understand this. These are the types of people. 
related to business and management. Um, dinosaurs that only adopt technology after everybody else has already adopted it, those are way over here. These are the late majority of people that will be adopting things, right? What would these be called? Early adopters, yes. Even before early adopters, uh, what would you have? Where do the ideas come from? The innovators, right? The people that develop the ideas, the innovators. Those people, some people say, for example, was Alex Chu, he has the newest technology all of the time, and people go and they talk to him, what do you think about this? If he likes it, then other people will start to adopt it. Those are some of your peers that start to adopt innovative technologies. <coughs> and these early adopters usually look to what he has, and then they adopt it. And then the late adopters, or the late majority, they will adopt what these early adopters have only if this continues to work and impresses everybody. And then only after everybody else has adopted it and your pet dinosaur has one, then maybe the dean of programs will adopt it. Right? So with social media and big data, you should be looking for these people. These people that start the blogs. These people that are talking about the blogs. These people that are saying, where is the newest technology? The people that are most active online, those people usually love what they're dealing with. You can't take it away from them. No matter if you tell him to stop, they're still going to continue talking about it and researching this. Regardless of how much you pay them. So if you can find those people and let those people that are addicted to that product or service help make the new product for you, they should be very, very happy just to have that opportunity. For Forget about pay, regardless of pay, just because they're addicted to those products and services and innovating and designing these new things, <coughs> they can be adopted within your organization to promote. So your Hyundai company, your car flying company, you find out who is promoting that the most or who's most interested in that, get them to partner with you, maybe for free, and they will be able to do your marketing for free. Those concepts are very important. Is luck really important? What's more important, luck or just working hard? It's kind of important uh, being in Korea. Korean people work, some people say, from 2,400 hours a year to 26 or 2,800 hours a year. Versus people in France, I believe it's 1,500 hours a year. Some countries, on average, work 1,200 hours a year. So you're working more than double what they work. Uh, let's not talk about how many hours a professor works. So is effort and hard work important? Korea did grow faster than any other country, as we talked about in chapter 1 and chapter 2, right? United States grew, how long did it take? How long did it take the United States to grow? Uh, the third line here, development time, agrarian, industrial, United States versus Japan versus Korea. United States changed from agrarian culture, farming type culture, to an industrial culture in 100 years. Japan copied them, reverse engineered, or the polite word is benchmark them, which is exactly what United States did. United States benchmarked United Kingdom before. It's not just original in the United States. They benchmarked them, and then uh, Japan took seven years to develop. Korea took, some people say, 30 years, some people say 15 years to develop and become one of the world's financial powerhouses. Yes? Um, there's a variety of other things that we need to know for review. Let's go through the review and then get back into the main topic. Um, you should be aware of all of the, the concepts, Maslow, Hirschberg, McGregor, um, these models of development. Um, know also that most of these theories were developed in their culture by people thinking that what they did and, and said and thought was right and didn't realize other cultures have different values. So all of these theories generally have problems with them. Um, getting down into the two million minutes, we were talking about how you spend 24, 26, 2800 hours working and it's also even before you get into the work in school. Do you guys think you work more than the Chinese? Students that work almost 6,000 minutes in high school versus India that work, Indian students that work almost 
400,000 hours versus, sorry, 400,000 minutes uh, versus United States students that study only 300,000 minutes in high school. Do you think you study more or less than these? <laughs> About the same? <laughs> students in my class? <laughs> yes. Of course, you know, in Korea, some people have hagwons 5 o'clock in the morning. And there are some hagwons that go through till 3 o'clock in the morning also. So yes, the cultural differences are very, very important. And you must know parochial, ethnocentric, etc. Um, so we know about Hofsted, we know about Hall, which is the language issues. Um, we're going to be going through that a lot. Clockhorn, Strodbeck, the relationship to nature, Trumpenar, Schwartz, the Globe Project. Um, the last lecture we talked about, what was it? The art of war. How many chapters or main parts are there of the art of war? Isn't there a what? Rule? 13, yes. That was my question. There were 13 different chapters in the art of war. Yes, uh, these are interpretations of them all combined, what's important. We must understand that. What is some of the, uh, what is better to find a, a weak person and go pick on them? To find a weak company and go attack that company? Or is there some better way to manage yourself more wisely? Is it better to just go head to head with the top company and show the world you're better than the top, like Apple and Samsung fighting? Or if a company like Motorola is dying, should, should Samsung be attacking the dying company? Or is, is a merger might be good? Um, what would that be classified as according to the art of war? What do they usually say? The best way to win is to win without the battles, yes. So a merger would be better than just attacking them. And again, we come back to here again. These big companies, a lot of them don't really develop a lot of their details in the house. They find these new companies, new startups, and they buy these new technologies for cheap. And then they become that. Um, yes, so the art of war is important to review. Uh, the importance of moral influence within an organization. You can cheat. You can uh, push people around. You can uh, abuse other people. You can have slave labor. It exists. A lot of people in North America, they hate the idea of using online programs like Elance or Freelance because they think giving jobs to people for $3 an hour is cheating them. That's despicable. That's, that's terrible. But they're forgetting the cultural view, they're forgetting the global view, that those people love to work for that. They love that. Maybe they're addicted to it. Maybe they'd work for free. Maybe that person that's working for $3 an hour is an executive that's retired and already made millions of dollars. Or maybe it's somebody that's working in the Philippines that just wants to get $3 an hour because that's considered very good. Um, so moral influence is very important. Also with technology, as I said last class, so many people have access to all information now. You start doing something wrong, especially when you're working in a different culture. You do something wrong when you're in a new country. You don't have your family and friends to protect you. You can have your reputation destroyed in seconds. You should start to make sure you're considering the moral influence. The importance of broadly defined um, leadership. There's no absolute superiority or inferiority in competition. Everybody is always in flux. Everybody's always changing. So again, what does this article say? What are your views on this article? This talks about how uh, natural talent is important, intelligence is important, education is important. Which one is the most important? Many people have the idea of individualism, but as we know, uh, a lot of the world, like North America, is focused. Individualism is very different than collectivism. Um, so what do we mean? Uh, so when, when this author said when they when he suggests a new idea of like friendship, then those people are like uh, wanna, I mean, they cannot accept accept it at the first place because they like some people think. Like 
So some people believe, I would add mistakenly, that you can be successful just with your hard work. And that is a mistake. Why? Why could Einstein, or why would Einstein have been nothing just with his brain? Einstein must have interaction, social capital, guangxi with others. Why? The idea of studying physics, the idea of studying relativity, it had to come from a teacher, right? He had to have somebody else to start the idea. He had to have people around to bounce the ideas off of. Doesn't matter if you have the greatest brain in the world. I believe all of you understand that there's probably many people in the world, maybe hundreds or thousands, or at least for my students, there might be one student on the other side of the world that might be as smart as you. Maybe if we're talking about other students, there's thousands of people as smart as them, maybe a little bit smarter. And because of that, you can't just rely on your intelligence. You have to manage that relationship around you. Do you need luck? What is luck? Sorry? Luck is a coincidence. Can you make your own luck? No, huh? I can. I think my life has been very lucky. I was able to retire when I was like 30. I know another guy that uh, he was younger than you, and he, all of a sudden he, he went from just being a musician to a business person. He wanted to retire without any worries financially, and he did it in three, almost four years. Is that just luck? How can you make your own luck then? Any ideas how you can make luck? Working. Working hard, doing more, being proactive. You put yourself out there. You start to do what you love and what your skills are valuable and you align your passion and your skills with what the market needs and finds important. You get into this type of position um, skills, oops. So luck, I believe, is, a, is proper management of what, what are your skills, what are your passions, what are you passionate about, and it's not just anything. Uh, some people just say, follow what you, what you love. Well, let's say I love singing. Oh, sorry, me, oh, and those types of things. I'm not going to be very, get very successful with my singing, even though I love it. Maybe I don't have the skills for it. And definitely nobody in the market wants my skills doing that. So you have to find what you love and what you have the skills for and what the market wants and align those and you will become this type of person. And then other people will follow. And then more people will follow. And more people will follow. And you'll become more successful. So the more proactive you are in that, the more you find these type of areas. Where do they have new products being shown? And go to those new product launches. Or go to their websites and start commenting. Start being active in what you love. The more that you start following that, the more other people will see you and the fact that you're doing more means you will have more opportunities. And that whole chance of finding the $100 bill on the ground is just a new opportunity. As soon as you get more of it, there will be more luck there. So you can make your luck. So, with that question, how many of you have done something this week to get your dream job? Other than sit on your butts in a classroom. How many of you have been interested in getting an accounting job and talked to somebody about it, did a little bit, but then not followed through with it? How many of you are actually using your projects to, to plan on getting your job now? Is that luck? Because that person obviously will have more opportunities to get that dream job than somebody that just gets even 100% average at the end of the year, right? 
when you survey, it would be interesting to talk about uh, somebody that's very successful. Are their marks really important? Did anybody ever ask you about your marks in the last year? Ask some very successful person if the university <coughs> marks are really important. It's more important, especially with technology, to be focusing on this Guangxi concept. So you can make luck. Uh, is natural talent very important? Anybody like to run? Is there anybody that's a jogger here? You are. You look like you're in jogging outfit. Uh, are you a jogger or a runner? I love to work out. Okay. Do you think you would stand a chance in the Olympics compared to somebody that took steroids and uh, had eight hours of training a day? Perhaps not, right? So there's all sorts of advantages that you must consider. You must do a lot of things. Just natural talent alone is not going to make very much in 2013 or beyond. There's a lot of things that change. Um, so we know Guangxi is important. What is Guangxi? <coughs> we know what social capital generally is. It refers to resources available in and through personal and business networks. That's generally what networking is. That's generally what Guangxi is. But it's definitely not all of it. There's much more to it. I cannot teach what all of it is. I can give you ideas and point you in the right direction. But there's a lot more to it. Um, these resources include information, emotional support, ideas, leads, luck, business opportunities, financial capital, trust, cooperation, power and influence, even goodwill. There's a lot of things to it. The social means it's not just about who you know, but it's also about who you don't know. There's a lot of people that will have parties and invite not just the powerful people, but sometimes they will invite people they don't like. Why would you do this, something like that? Because they need them? What if that person, uh, let's say you're going to have a party or you're going to have a business event, you would obviously think about trying to invite your most powerful customers or powerful people, but why would you invite some um, person that's not powerful and somebody that you might not really value or like straight away? But that person might know somebody Okay, that person might know somebody else. Right. That person's mother or father might be helpful to you. Don't forget, also, there's the marketing aspect, right? A lot of these Guangxi parties will specifically not only invite the powerful people, but just the people that are the entertainers. The people that are going to clap a lot, or the people that are going to laugh a lot, or the people that are just sexy walking around, that guy or the girl running back and forth that's going to make that powerful person happy. So there's a lot more that goes into it. Um, what capital means in social capital? Putting emphasis on productivity, which enables us to create value, get things done, achieve goals, fulfill missions in life, and make contributions in the world. That's a good point to say, but don't forget the whole concept of paying it forward. Some people will see, if you only do things just to get something from somebody, then a lot of people think you're not a good person. Right? So, what do you have to do then? What's that called in business terms? Does that mean uh, what I said, to repeat it? Good people in management, they will go through and they will invite the powerful people. They will develop relationships with powerful people. But sometimes you need to develop relationships with people that aren't very powerful. Um, do you need to always invest in just getting what you want? Is that good? What's that called in business when you just give out help? Sharing. Sharing is the normal human word, yes, in business. Sorry? Investment, um, yes, you can invest in good things or bad things, yes. You can invest in charity. Why would you want to invest in charity? For the, ch for the future? Right. Maybe uh, you don't know if they're going to be helpful. Yes. Uh, in karma, sometimes they say what goes around comes around. Some people don't understand that concept, but yes, 
It's the big picture. The idea that what goes around comes around, or karma, that sounds like a story. It sounds like a fairy tale. Some people just want to work hard, just want to be in the big Silicon Valley, just want to be with the big guys, just want to be with lots of money, just want to be with the Louis Vuitton and get successful. But that alone could hurt them. They need to show they're a good person, because if they're good, that will come back around. Yes. And that concept that you can't easily explain is part of Guangxi. Social responsibility. That's one of the reasons why social responsibility is growing. That's one of the reasons why people are giving out uh, to charity. Or that's one of the reasons why companies or successful people are giving grants. Um, on that topic, how many people here, could I see a show of hands, how many people here have found any details on grants? One, two, three, four people have some information on grants. You all need to start realizing the importance of grants. That's what we're talking about. Um, those people that are going to be giving with social uh, responsibility can be very valuable. Uh, the myth of individualism. Individualism is many times, number one, misunderstood, so it's just you or your person or an egocentric person. Uh, individualism uh, needs to have a much broader consideration. Most of the world is not individualistic thinking, right? Most of the world is in China or in India and these other countries. Most of the world is group oriented. So just thinking of yourself can very easily lead to your failure. You need to consider the environment. That's why many times some companies will be refused from developing automated companies. They will be refused from developing robots in communities where it's just better to hire more people to do that job with physical labor. Take care of the community that way and the community will reward your efforts much more. Sometimes it's not just the dollar that is smart. Sometimes you need to help other people in order to succeed. Um, in this paper, the author points to many, many concepts. It's not just luck, it's not just talent, it's not just intelligence, it's not just education that makes you successful. It needs to all come together working with other people. Um, natural talent, intelligence, we've talked about. Education, we've started to talk about. Effort, we understand that uh, just working very, very hard is good. You need to work hard nowadays, but that alone will not get you ahead. Luck is something that you can make on your own, right? Um, you guys understand that uh, a lot of Google happened by chance. A lot of Microsoft happened by chance, right? You guys understand that Samsung, in some ways, started by chance, right? Samsung wanted to sell a lot of these electronic products, and they started telling other people in other countries they could do it, even though they didn't know how initially. So as a chance, as sort of a gamble, as a bet, like students betting with somebody else, I bet you can't go talk to this person. They did it. They put out a contract saying, I can provide you with this for this price. And they won. But they didn't know how. So what did they do? They actually <coughs> took the product from some other competitor and tried to reverse engineer it and just copy it. That's one of the ways that they started. You can make your own luck, obviously. Use this for getting a job. Start thinking about how you can use your research projects with the companies you're interested in now. Start thinking about how you can get paid to do your information. Use these grants. Um, people are paid better and promoted faster, uh, promoted at younger ages. Um, all of these things are, are happening more and more, but you don't need to focus on money. Usually just focusing on money is focusing in the wrong direction. Focus on your passions, your skills, uh, and the market needs. Later, the money will come. Um, the, the story talked quite a bit about many of these things. How happiness is related to it, how health is related to it, how longer life is related to it. Um, there's a variety of things it did talk about. It's very, very important. Um, I hope you guys understand these things. And then some students are going to come up and they're going to talk about their understanding of the chapter. Hi guys, um, this is Isimo and Kim Doyle, and we will be presenting a paper here about um, what the professor um, presented this student about Kangxi. 
and the related um, stuff. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about glossary, uh, Kanji. Um, a general definition would be special relationships two persons have with each other. Now, Kanji means efforts to establish and build up relationship with other, where there was no pre-existing relations between the between or where an existing relationship is not close enough to be useful. And next up is Lian. Uh, Lian is a personal behavior, manner or personality. And then to be is it's social service, which means success or fail. And then finally Lenkwe, uh, which means humanized obligations with additional social, additional social functions and exchange. Um, so uh, for this slide, um, I want you to focus on the following sentence. A Chinese guy, guy saying I've got Guangxi is same as an American guy saying I've got great connections. So if you get the general <coughs> basic idea about Guangxi. Just a second. Do you guys agree? Is a guy that has uh, graduated from Harvard University. He's a super Greek. He's got a 100% average from Harvard. Does he have perfect Guangxi? Absolutely not. There is a chance that even though he has perfect marks and he has the degree, there's a chance that everybody hates him and nobody wants to work with him, right? So some people associate those things similarly, but there's much more to it. For example, you guys know that if you're in a fourth year of our university program and some student comes in at a first year level and asks you a question, especially if they ask you a question in front of the dean or the president of the university or another professor, you know that there is a requirement for you to help that first year student. There's no law, but you know because of Guangxi, you're responsible for helping them. That concept should be understood for your life out there with the alumni. Find the people that already graduated Yonsei and are working with organizations you love because they have to help you. Especially if you ask them those details in front of other people. It's bad to refuse you. You have opportunities to work in other companies. Maybe it's volunteering to start, but those are there. And it should surprise people if you don't use them. Thanks, continue. Uh, but as Professor, Professor mentioned earlier, uh, there are lots of uh, definitions about Guangxi, but like no one are uh, accurate. But the general, uh, uh, the definition, the general definition is already mentioned so from the glossary, so I will skip that. And Guangxi, in one word, could be translated into network, which is inmate in Korean. And connection, don't you? Uh, the next next slide talks about the importance of Kangxi in the case in the case of China. So this is a Western businessman having a deal with China contract, which is contract, and stopped uh, stopped staying in contact for a while, and he uh, he returned to China later and. There was no deal. Um, the Chinese company made a uh, deal with another company uh, because he, uh, the, Kong, they, the Westerner um, ignored Kongji. So yes, signing a contract and walking away without staying in contact um, does not work in China. You need to manage the concepts of um, trust, favors, membership in society, relationships, etc. Not only in China, but uh, everywhere. But before you, you change the slide, I'd like to quiz the world. <laughs> what we're saying here, what they've just said very interestingly, is that somebody can go and make a contract and then the contract disappears. The Western world, the supposedly it's the world that's developed, what would their reaction be? What would happen if you go and make a contract, but then it's disappeared, if the people don't follow the contract? 
they would think about suing you. Okay? Um, what does that mean? What is the legal system? Why do we have contracts? Is it just so that somebody can get more money? Absolutely not. Is it just to have something that's fair? No. You know that a lot of laws are not meant just to be fair. Some people in the United States might think that's crazy to say. Laws are absolutely meant to be fair. What's an example of where laws are made not for everybody to be equal? Can you think of examples where laws or rules or regulations are made so people are not equal? Tax, Tax laws? Okay. Perfect example in the West. What else? Uh, they appear to give more advantage to the people in minority. Where do they give most advantage to? The people that can actually pay the most. The rich kids usually have the most access to money. They can pay for the best education. They can pay for the tuition. They can usually get in better than people that are from families that can't pay. That's definitely biased. Right. It's supposed to be meant to be fair. It's supposed to be meant to be equal. But of course, it's not. Korea, Japan, China is definitely created in a different way. What is the way that it's created here? If it's not based on the legal system, if it's not focused on suing somebody here, what is it focused on? Korea was not made, it's not designed, the laws are not made just to be able to sue somebody if they're bad. Right? Some people say the North American system is. What is it then? To keep relationship between companies, <coughs> yes, that is one part of it, but there are laws for children, not in companies. There are laws for people that stay at home and don't work. To make sure everybody feels safe? Mm, that's a good that's a good hope. We hope everybody is safe, but unfortunately some systems might be made uh, contrary to that. Yes, Dina? Uh, is the contract used uh, as an evidence? Is that contract? Our, yes, in the North America in North America, United States, contracts are the basis of evidence, right. But Korea and China and Japan are not based on evidence. They're not based on contracts. They're not based on equality. They're based, they're based on trust. In some sense, yes. Trust is a huge part of Guangxi. What else is the big part of Guangxi here that is not part of the Canadian style or the American style? Favors. Favors. I like getting favors. Everybody likes getting favors, but you don't have to do a favor in North America. But you should here. Why? You should have a network here, and you should have a network there, but you don't really have to there. Why? Give and take. Give and take, yes. What is the, the key word? Who started it all? Confucius. Confucianism. Hierarchy. There is a hierarchy for harmony. You're supposed to be based on harmony in society. So the people here are not equal to the people here. But everybody has their role. These people might have to do things for them, but these people have to also do things for them. Maybe you have to pay them. Maybe you have to provide jobs for them. Maybe you have to provide good uh, government situation for them. They're not equal, but they all have a responsibility for each other. In later in this chapter, do you talk about the five uh, responsibilities? Uh, the five okay. relationships? Great. You guys are aware before they test you and tell you? Anybody know what those five relationships are? Father and son. Father and son, yes. King and the Good. King and the, uh, the, the rule, yes. The ruler and the ruled, yes. Wife and the husband. Wife and a husband, yes. Teacher, 
uh, <laughs> teacher students. That's not in those relationships, but it's implied, yes? Uh, I don't think it says brothers and sisters. It does say older brothers, younger brothers, yes? And there's one other aspect to it. There's five levels. King and ruler, husband and wife, father, son. Sorry, what's the bottom one? Friends. A lot of the definition, a lot of discussion in the internet or on literature has been mistranslated in my opinion. It says friends. Well, what does that mean? If you just tell a Canadian person, an American person, Guangxi is related to friends, Confucianism is related to friends, that doesn't have any meaning. So what is the meaning that you understand? How are friends considered trust, yes? What we just talked about earlier, the idea of your alumni, they're supposed to be your friends. They're not maybe true friends, they're not equal friends, but they're friends, they're alumni. There's the older friend and the younger friend, right? The senior friend and the junior friend. Each of these countries in East Asia have special words for that, right? The Sambe Hubei, that whole concept. So it's not just friends. When you go to North America and say, my senior at school helped me, they don't understand you. What, some lady that's 70 years old helped you? No, you meant just a friend. So it's translated as friend, but there's more to it. So let's jump to the, uh, to uh, the next page. Yeah, before I jump on the next slide, uh, I want to emphasize that uh, about Guangxi, um, you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. Um, you still need to diversify the uh, network of relationship for using risk. So, one uh, thing about Guangxi, um, um, Kanji can be built to two um, elements. First is attribute, which is being a member of a definite lineage, a clan, or a social group, or family. And then friend um, is an institution and a locality uh, which provides a common basis to a group of individuals who are associated with it. And then um, um, Yanzi. Yanzi um, translates into face, uh, which further translates into um, image. So using face is very serious matter in China and everywhere that emphasizes Hongqi relationship. And here are some of the uh, <coughs> using face situations, admitting not to being able to do something, which is um, submission, uh, and saying no to others, which means that you are incapable. And here are some other ones, uh, but they sort of repeat the uh, shortcuts. Before we go on to Beyonce, does anybody have examples of this in your personal life? Can you elaborate more about identity? Okay, let's go back two slides. Um, here it's talking about Guangxi is made of this M I A N Z I. Beyonce. So, what is that? What is Guangxi? So it's the idea of losing face. Most of you here are, are Asian. You might have a good understanding of what it is. But as you get older, it becomes more and more important. Younger people are a little bit more relaxed about things. As soon as money starts to be involved, it becomes more serious. Does anybody have an example? I'll, gi I'll, start, I'll give you one example, and I'm, I'm wondering if you have other examples. There's times when two people that are senior in the company take a, a bunch of trainees or employees to another country, to China. And one is a, a Western director and one might be a Chinese manager that's bringing all of these employees. And the director is managing almost everything. However, the Chinese manager, he just organizes having the, uh, the restaurant for a reception once we get there. So far you understand that since the manager gets the restaurant, he has power and he's supposed to look important by being able to show he's an expert in the community. If he just brings people to McDonald's, he will probably lose face for some things. What because it's a big important, it's a premier company, 
that's going there? What kind of restaurant should he go to? It should be expensive for five star. It should be a nice place that shows high quality, right? Because you're not only showing high quality to people inside, who are you showing high quality to? Everybody around that you have been dealing with in China that hears that you are going to meet at that restaurant will judge your quality based on your environment. So even though the manager is just taking the restaurant and managing those details, it's very important. What if that manager comes from Toronto, everybody's coming from Toronto or New York to Beijing, and the manager starts at the hotel, putting everybody in the taxis, going to the restaurant, and because he's putting everybody in the taxis first, he goes last. What if people are waiting at the restaurant for a good half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour before he arrives? Are you able to start ordering? No? Does that make sense? In the West, maybe you don't order, but what about you just want a beer, or you want a wine, or you want water, or you want juice, or a Coke? Is that okay? Sounds reasonable, doesn't it? Why would the manager completely lose face or be insulted if you just start ordering your drinks? Why would you ruin some Guangxi there? Any ideas? Because trust is lost. Okay, yes, trust is lost. What is the trust? He is taking care of you. You trust he is taking care of you. And the fact that you think he didn't take care of your drinks is an insult, saying you didn't take care of me. So you're really insulting him just by ordering Coke or cider or 7-Up. Guangxi is a lot more than can easily be translated in a few words. Some of you might have heard some of these stories before. Uh, anybody have examples similar to that? No? Anyway, let's uh, let's go on. Um, yeah, so EMG is Professor Simplified uh, um, is one's dignity, self respect, prestige, or protection of one's face, image, which is Chenya in Korean. And here are two important points. It's hard to hear Chinese say no uh, when being asked about opinion because it harms Yang who fakes the image of the other that damages Guangxi. And to know what you heard is not important. It is crucial to know the meaning behind the words. Example would be an um, employee in China probably smooth talk to his superior in the essence of what the employee should be feel because of because you want to keep the um, um, image that is a um, very ardent follower to his superior. And the next next part, um, Tuyun Kim will present. Thank you. Um, I'm going to present about Wenqing. Uh, Wenqing is about personal relation. About feeling, emotion, and connection, mutuality, similar to compassion. For example, when somebody gets married, people will give money for goodwill, <coughs> wrenching. Um, uh, exchange of gifts to show mutual respect, an effective way to communicate. Um, wrenching is an action to show the willingness to building and improving one's uh, So it's like, uh, wrenching is about. Uh, Showing that you are caring about your opponent, uh, and, and I think it's about a, pre a procedure to build uh, fancy and face. Uh, about Confucianism, it's about creating social structure and order for stability and harmony, and as a Professor mentioned about the five principles. 
So applied relationship implies that each person has a role and personality, a responsibility as to what they ought to be to, according to the relationship. And in the video clip, the guy said about fufu uh, which means uh, father behave what father ought to behave in saying for son. And Confucianism in here is very strict and fixed hierarchical order. Some people in Canada, for example, might think that it's terrible to think that a father has control over the, the wife or the family. That's not equal. Some people might think it's not good. Well, how could it be justified? How generally is it justified in Korea, in China, in Japan? You guys understand that some people feel, I'm not saying everybody, but some people feel the man has the responsibility to bring home the money for the family or bring the money for the family and the woman has the responsibility, the equal responsibility, just as important responsibility to make sure there's a good family life, make sure the kids are brought up well, make sure the kids have good education, right? It's an, supposedly an equal relationship, but it's in a system that appears unequal, okay? Make sure that we understand how the Western thinking based on the, the individualism and the legalities of the litigious society sometimes doesn't apply here. Go ahead. Uh, we make a few questions. Test, uh, test, test. Yes. Uh, first the question was... Being strict. The last thing they said was being strict. So I've got my evaluation here. Good. Test them. The first two will go over by Timothy. Uh, what is the difference between Guangxi and Confucianism? After all, they both talk about building relationship. Are they same or uh, different? <coughs> yes, go on. Uh, I think the difference is that while Confucianism talks about the benefit of all other citizens of society, Guangxi is about me and benefiting from a relationship, one to one, or as a group of people. That doesn't have to be all like, societal beneficiary. Although I've already given you two marks, I'll give you another uh, note here that was very good to <coughs> contribute. Um, but I would say in legal terms or litigious terms or top management terms, if I focus on the details, because I'm a detailed individual focused person, I would change something. Can you repeat those, the last thing you just said? You forget the last thing you just said? <laughs> Anybody remember the last thing she just said? Okay, so you're saying Guangxi is focused on your benefit. I think Guangxi goes beyond that. Any other students want to contribute to that? Yes. Is it Guangxi and Confucianism are very different? It's it's they're related, but they're not the same thing. No. What is a, a comment? It's it's good that you're understanding they are related. Yes. But what I'm talking about is. She has identified many things that are correct. However, she gets benefit from Guangxi, but there's also other aspects to it. Sometimes you might not get benefit immediately. Sometimes you might not get benefit directly. Sometimes you might not realize benefit, like social capital or so, sorry, social responsibility or charity. Potential, yes. Like what? Why would an alumni help you? Because I have the, um, maybe he or she sees the potential of me and can benefit later to be in a relationship together. Like Good, that's one aspect of it. But why else? So all of you understand that your alumni basically have to or should help you because you might become rich and famous and help them. But what if they're already rich and famous? Or what if they're already powerful and they don't need any more money? Yes? Because 
Right, don't forget that. They are tied together with you whether you like it or not, whether they like it or not. You have that relationship that can never disappear. If you fail, they fail. Their image fails. If the organization doesn't have everybody being successful, that means some people don't look as successful. So they are responsible for making sure they were powerful because they got the job because they went to Yonsei. They need to help make sure everybody with Yonsei continues to be successful. They might not see benefit immediately. Maybe they already got the benefit for 20 years. They got their job, they got their power just because they were related to Yonsei. So now that they have the benefit, they're required to just repay it and you don't have to give them anything else. Okay? Great. Um, yeah, I also answered um, the question what? Um, and my answer was the concept of relationship in Confucianism. Confucian speaks or refers to the specific role and duty to be followed from the hierarchy, whereas in Kongji, one extends relationship because of self interest, which is flexible and selective. Um, that was my answer for the question one. Moving on. Um, Next question is, what could be the problems of Kangxi oriented management in business? It can be unfair sometimes. Um, in what ways? Example? Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's not, there is no like, I would say. Uh, you need help? We go out and we, uh, we show up at a coffee shop together. Just because we show up at a coffee shop together, if we're going to be talking together, having a class chat there, who's supposed to pay? <laughs> Is it that I get no benefit? Not really. You might think initially, as an individualistic focused person, you might think mistakenly that I get no benefit. But how could I get benefit? You work harder. <laughs> You're not supposed to tell me that. My students are supposed to work hard too. Everybody's supposed to be working hard, right? Don't forget, I go out to other events. And the older professors also pay for me. The dean, the president, when we go out together, he is supposed to pay. Are you allowed to let them pay? Are you supposed to let them pay? Are you supposed to show you want to try to pay? You're supposed to be acting like you want to pay also, but the person that wins the battle to pay is supposed to be in that position, right? If you just take the free food, if you just take the free benefits, and you don't repay it, you might seem very comfortable, but you will generally be pushed out of society. Take a look at a lot of the foreign people that are around, if they just get, 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 they go out to these relationships, they go out to these meetings and continue to get free drinks and free food and don't repay and give presents at the Chusuk and stuff, those people usually don't stick around. Make sure you understand the relationship might not appear equal, but it's designed to be equal in a bigger conceptual uh, aspect. Go ahead, continue. Um, so my answer was... Um, on the slide, Kangxi could be a problem because the nature of Kangxi shapes the employees to become passive in judgment and communication. For instance, an employee, um, because he does not want to ruin Kangxi, they could give him like something like promotion. Um, his only focus is on pleasing and agreeing to his superiors whatever the decision he makes, the superior makes. Another, uh, another one would be not having to tell um, emergent or potentially fatal problems or errors because he or she does not want to criticize um, his superior. Uh, in nutshell, um, if too much Kongji inefficiency will follow, however, this is not to say that Kongji is bad because it is one natural way of motiva motivation out of relationship between superior and inferior. Um. The question number three. Korea has been influenced by Confucianism and uh, we can also find the Minchi and Minchi in Korean society. Discuss what might be the example of Minchi and Minchi related situation in Korea. 
Is it like wrenching like a gift that we get at like holidays, like Chisa? Right. We give presents to like you did? I didn't notice your gift this year. <laughs> maybe I'm Western. Maybe I'm not supposed to accept it anyway. Yes. That's a good funny point to talk about. It is very confusing. I'll come back to the chapter. I'll talk about some things and we'll discuss this. Make sure it's clear later. So thank you very much for your presentation, guys. Um, let's get into the, the textbook to see if we understand what the textbook is talking about. There are social cultural concepts we have to understand. The five fundamental relationships in traditional Confucian society. You need to understand what these are. The key elements of network building. Um, and sometimes I would gamble to say it's not just building. Sometimes this relationship exists whether you want to build it or not. Like I gave you with the example, a student going to a, a successful person that's already retired that's from the same university, he might have already got the benefit, so you don't have to give more benefit. Uh, there are special relationships between people, uh, for sure. As it says here, it's, it appears to favor the weaker person. You guys go to a lunch with me, and you get free lunch. If I go to lunch with somebody that's older than me or more successful than me, I might get free lunch. Um, I might get free lunch just because I might appear to be a visitor here. But that's not always the case. It's not always just that the weaker person benefits, right? There is the bigger concept that you must consider. They might have benefit from being associated before. They might have benefit by uh, a relationship or a image, a reputation that they help these students every once in a while. And now it's just their time to help anybody to put off on their checklist. And you just happen to be that person. And they've already got the benefit from helping. So Guangxi efforts to establish and build a relationship with others um, is accurate, but it's not always focused on just building it. Sometimes there's Guangxi whether you like it or not. Um, it might be that there's no pre-existing relationship with between them, um, but you need to carefully consider those details. So, the three social cultural concepts. There's uh, these that are focused on the relationology or the relationship focus, uh, and it's not just immediate, not just in this second, but it's a bigger picture, just like karma, just like luck, just like the concept of paying it forward, just like the concept of uh, what goes around comes around. Um, also, we are focused on specially connected individuals or social organizations. Don Wei is the work unit, Guangxiang, the web of connection networks. There's a variety of things we need to understand. The two biggest things usually are Mian and Mianzi. Um, the concept of face. It's, uh, how do you describe what face is? What would you say to my mother? And I hope you're respectful. How do you describe how I have to keep face? A friend in Toronto asked me the other day, um, he hasn't seen me with a beard for a long time. And he thought that that beard looked cool, and he was growing a beard now to copy me. Why don't I have a beard? Is that related to face? Yes? How would you explain it to my mom in Canada that, that doesn't really know the concept of Guangxi? Is it just because I have to have a pretty face? No, no I don't have that anyway. Cultural aspect? Which would be what? Like, you know, in Korea, keeping the outer appearance gives the other some kind of. The fact that I am close to you represents your image. You know, uh, in Western countries, they have that saying, birds of a feather flock together. You represent who you are around. You are representative of your friends. So the fact that I'm just near you, I need to give a good image for you. So, so what? 
Why do I need to shave this? Are you saying Abraham Lincoln was a bum? <laughs> George Washington? Those guys with beards are bums? Is that what you're saying? Yes? Look at that. Everybody wants to talk about, yeah, they're ugly. <laughs> So you're saying that George Washington doesn't look neat? People with beards don't look neat? Do you realize most people with beards still shave here and still shave up here? And some of them shave in the sides and they just grow this just like you do with your hair. They tailor it. What's the difference? People forget about that. Yes? You have to appear clean. Do you have clean hair today? So to, what you said was to gain credibility, you have to appear clean. Well, I assume you have cleaned your hair. Do you think I didn't clean if I shaved? I should have, I should have come in with a beard today. I should have come in with a goatee today. Yes, somebody help him out. Let's go. Oh, okay. Do, you got your hand up? Um, I think it also has to do with your face expression, facial expression. So your beard, you can't really see your face. Good guesses. We're guessing here. Do you guys realize that some people might have been pushed to think a certain thing? Some people might have been pushed to think, or they have been managed to operate in a certain way. Originally, who had facial hair in Asia? The rulers, right? The emperors had the long hair, right? Those people had long hair as a sign of power, as a sign of respect, as a sign of intelligence, cleanliness, wisdom. The longer, the more wise that person was. And everybody else that wasn't a ruler was not allowed to have the hair. As a sign of respect, most people cleaned their face as far as cutting the hair to show they have respect for the older person. And since that older emperor has basically been phased out, but most people are still the regular levels of society, you're led to believe that it's not good. You're not supposed to have it. The reason why you're not supposed to have it, because your mom says you don't have it, she says it's dirty, you're led to believe it's dirty, but it started from nobility. So there's so much more to Guangxi, there's so much more to face, and it's definitely not image. What is the image? If a guy that looked like George Washington, wearing a suit, walked in here, would you not respect him? You will respect him. Are you an outcast? <laughs> Are you special? Um, so the concept of face is, is important. What is it if it's not related to being clean? What, is, what are some key words that aren't related to just shaving? What you say or do? Uh, yeah, let's get into a more serious question. Some people associate Japan with the highest suicide rate in the world because of face. Some people commit suicide in Japan because they lose face. Has nothing to do with showering, nothing to do with hair, nothing to do with pimples. What is it related to usually? Self-confidence, yes. Reputation, is it that student's reputation? Or is it that they're letting down the school, they're letting down the family. If they fail in a class, they're making the whole family and school and all of their friends look bad because that failure is next to them. And everybody else will look better if you don't have that failure around. That's usually what they believe. They could be pretty, pretty boy, pretty girl, whatever, but that is a better description of face. It's a negative association, but that's more of a concept. Face represents your image and relationship to those around you. You represent a group, not just your, your skin. So there's uh, two facial dimensions. 
There's the lian, which is the personal behavior, your manner of how you're doing things. Um, what's an example of that? How you shave. How you wear clothes. If it was a hot day, and we were at a university in North America, I could take this off. I could take off my tie, and I have an undershirt underneath. I could take that off. Could I do it here? No, I'd probably be fired at the end of the day. So that's an example of the behavior, right? There's a certain way you need to act. And of course, there's mianzi. You're not, you're not allowed to be associated with these negative things. So the whole idea of image and status, uh, you're not supposed to be doing certain things in groups. The mianzi, social status is important, and it's not just being at the uh, elite level, it's not just being at the high class level, you're supposed to conduct yourself in an appropriate manner also. Um, in Confucian systems, man is uh, related, relationship oriented, being one who has an inherent interest in cultivating his guangxi. Ren is important, um, the benevolence, humaneness, you care for others, maybe empathy, maybe apathy, maybe altruistic, uh, Renkring is the humanized obligation, offering of congratulations or condolences that also has a social exchange in addition to emotional expression. Humanized obligation, oh, before we move on, also the whole idea of, why don't you laugh? <laughs> you funny students, ha 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 ha. Why don't you see that very often in Japan, Korea, or China? Why is it that a lot of people cover their mouth? Because you're supposed to control yourself for the group environment. And facial loss of facial control and laughing out loud is, is not control. So the humanized obligation. One of the commonly accepted social norms regulating Chinese interpersonal relationships based on the Confucian concept of reciprocity. Again, reciprocity is hugely important. It involves social exchanges, keeping equity is important, uh, and it's not just keeping equity today. Sometimes they already got benefits many, many years ago. Sometimes they're going to get benefit, sometimes in the future, and maybe it's not even from you. Uh, the social exchange, not for economic exchange. It's very important for one to maintain Guangxi all the time. What are the relationships? In Confucianism, different social hierarchies uh, are important. The Chinese group-oriented and socially dependent being. Is the Chinese group-oriented and socially dependent? Um, what do you think of this? It's the individual who is capable of defining roles for himself and who is located at the center of relationships. Uh, that could easily be misunderstood, right? It's not just an individual almost anywhere in East Asia. It's always somehow connected to a group. So the, what are the main groups? What are the five relationships? There's the father and son. There's the ruler and ruled, or subjects. There's the husband and wife. There's the older brother to the younger brother. And there's, for example, the faithfulness between friends. So the older friend to the younger friend. You're supposed to help the others. Uh, if you're experienced at something, you're supposed to help somebody that's new at something. So the dynamic role of the self. The self is the freedom in regulating the relations with people. Um, there's resiliency in the concept of groups with the Chinese people. It's very useful for social and psychological flexibility in constructing uh, kinship, the, uh, the kin relationships, family relationships, the whole concept that you're supposed to take care of your family. Some people say, and in, in many countries you will get sued if you just hire a cousin. Some people will think that it's definitely not good if you hire somebody just because you have a family relationship with them. A lot of politicians in North America must take very strong measures or strong steps to avoid doing anything with their family because they might get sued. Is that human nature? Is that natural? Is it smart to do that? Is there a problem with helping your family? Doesn't that show loyalty? Doesn't that show caring? Doesn't that show hard work? 
Isn't, aren't those good values? So I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying consider both aspects. Five fundamental relationships with Guangxi, a very complicated phenomenon. Uh, some, there's a, a dual role, a passive follower, a predetermined relationship, and the initiator of a voluntarily constructed relationship. Um, overall, life, I think, I hope, everywhere in the world becomes increasingly relationship-based. The more that China is growing, the more that people are going to learn about this and adopt it, I think the idea of focusing on the relationships is very important. So when you're trying to develop yourself, the concept that you might have learned from 100 years ago, don't cheat in class, I'm not telling you to cheat. Let me be free of legal objections right away. But what is cheating? Isn't it just working with somebody else? Isn't it helping somebody else? Isn't cheating in class collaboration, as the business world says? So using smartphones in class should be good, as long as you're paying respect and developing the community. Um, Guangxi provides the lubricants, as they say, for the Chinese to get through life. But increasingly, it's not just the Chinese. Increasingly, everybody need, needs to understand this. Building in, uh, in Guangxi evasion. How do the Chinese actually build up their personal network? Uh, there are different ways for the family formation in Japan, and Korea, and China. What are some of the big differences between family in Japan and family in Korea? Japan and Korea have the biggest differences, and I'm not talking about the war and those type of hard feelings. What's the biggest difference between family in Japan and Korea? Related to Guangxi, related to management. What is family in Japan? What is family here? You might be able to date your mother, your grand, let's, let's make it easy. Your grandmother and your grandfather, they might say, oh, it's okay to date somebody from a different country, but don't marry them. Why? They don't want the blood contaminated. The family blood is the purest thing in Korea, right? You have to have the blood, the DNA, the genetics to belong. If you don't, you don't belong, period. No questions about it. What is it in Japan? Is it the same? Adoption is far more important, more acceptable in Japan. You can adopt somebody from a different culture, from a different country. As long as they show commitment to the family, as long as they show loyalty to the family, then they can be accepted as family. It doesn't have to be the bloodline. It can be by marriage, it can be just by association. You guys know that there are some of the top car companies or com global multinational companies in Japan that have, associ have been associated with being pure Japan in the past that are now being controlled by people from Brazil. And they're being respected. So, um, we have to consider the, the networks, the differences between China, Japan, and Korea. Uh, Japan is, is uh, quite open in some sense. Uh, Korea is very, very strict along the bloodlines in some sense. China, because there's more people, how is that different? China, many people say, is also more open. If you're from the same town as somebody else, especially when you're doing business on the other side of the world, that can be considered family. If you're from the f same school, that's definitely considered same family by a lot of people. Understanding these is quite important. There are different ways of the family formation. Um, attributes, being a member of the definite lineage of the clan, of the family, of the social group is very important to look at. Looking at the frame, how does it look? The institution, the location, the geography uh, provides a common basis for groups of individuals who are situated here. Increasingly, people are forgetting where most big business comes from in Korea. Traditionally, let's say 30, 40 years ago, where did most of the successful people come from? 
in Korea? Where were you supposed to marry somebody from? Seoul. Sorry? Seoul. Uh, sometimes Seoul, but tr even before Seoul was important. Where did the Chebol come from? Almost all of the Chebol families, most of them came from which province in Korea? Sorry? Uh, usually it's the Pusan area. Yes. There is this certain area that most people are from. So if you're from that area, most of the high government officials are from that area. Most of the high Chebol are generally from that area. Most of the people that get the jobs in those areas are from that area. If you're from the same geographic location, you get a lot more of an advantage than other people. You guys know that Busan people, basically, oh, what's the other city uh, on the the west side? Uh, there's there's the southwest and the southeast of Korea that supposedly hate each other, right? There's the relationships that they have. Some of them just work so much. Some of the other guys have better food, but they're not really good at other things. Um, the frame geographically is important. Kinship, locality, co-workers, classmates, teacher, students, all of these share attributes for constructing networks. Um, as we see here, there's uh, associations of fellow people. Chinese Guangxi construction can be characterized as somewhat ego-centered, perhaps. I believe it's much more social uh, focused. Uh, there is a connection of the network building at a bigger scale than just the individual. We have uh, just a few more slides. I'm going to go through a couple more. I'm going to leave this here. It's talking a little bit about what Guangxi is. So uh, make sure everybody has it. Thank you very much, folks.